That interface thing we tried works great, but the problem is it requires you to provide code to implement all the procedures, and an interface might have multiple procedures like that other proc you don't care about thing. What if you only need a single procedure? What do you do? This is the answer. A delegate is a type that describes a single procedure. It specifies what a procedure must look like. Well, just like an interface does, the interface said we had to have a procedure named display file, which took in a file info object and returned no value back. A delegate defines what a procedure should look like, but doesn't really specify which procedure to call. You determine that in your code. At runtime, you can specify the exact procedure you want to run. The only requirement is the procedure has to match the, well, the number of parameters, the types of the parameters, and the return value of the delegate. The delegate just defines the look and feel of a procedure. The delegate defines a type that is a procedure. It defines the parameters and the return value. It's like a mini interface. An interface can have more than one procedure. A delegate just is one procedure definition. Why would you use a delegate then? If you need to defer decisions about which exact procedure to call until runtime, if you're calling a .NET Framework procedure, which can't know what you want to do until your code is running, many .NET Framework procedures require you to supply a delegate instance as a callback, like that array.findAll procedure. It uses an instance of a delegate type to determine what you want to do as it iterates through each item in the array. To use a delegate, you have to declare the delegate type, or if you want to use one that already exists, find a delegate that matches what you need in existing code or in the .NET framework. You need to create a variable of that particular delegate type. That's not always true, you know. In that array.findAll example, we just pass the address of a procedure. So you don't actually have to create a variable. You can really just directly pass the address of a procedure if you want. You need to create an instance of the delegate type and assign it to the variable. Again, we skip that when we pass the address directly. We could have created a variable of the type, assigned the address of the procedure to that variable, then pass the variable to the array.findAll. But if you want to invoke the delegate directly, you can just invoke the procedure, and we'll see how to do that. So let's look at how we can declare a delegate and how we can invoke it in our next demonstration. I've created a class that has multiple different procedures that I'm going to be using. Here I have, for example, display file and size. It takes in a file info, it returns nothing back, and it just displays the file and the size to the console window. I have display file name. This one, again, takes in a file info, it returns nothing, and displays the file name to the console window. I also have a shared procedure. Remember what shared means. It means I can use it without creating an instance of this class called debug file and size, and that one writes to the debug window both the file name and the size, just like this one does, except it writes it to the debug window. So I've got these three procedures, and I might like to use each of them at different times throughout the lifespan of my application. Let's try an example that uses these. I'm going to go to the file search for class and look inside here. First of all, at the top of this file, I have a public delegate, that's a new keyword, that is a sub. I give it a name, I call it file handler delegate, doesn't matter what I call it, could be foo for all it matters. And this just describes the layout of the procedure that matches this type. It'll have to be a procedure that accepts a single parameter of type file info and returns no value back. So we've just defined a type of procedure, a class of procedure, that we can use in reaction to finding a file. So this keyword delegate means define a type of procedure that matches this layout. Okay, so the name of that type is file handler delegate. I have a variable handler as file handler delegate. 
So handler is a variable that will refer to a procedure, a procedure that is an object in memory that we can call, that we can invoke. So handler is an element of that type. And down here, every time we find a file, if the handler isn't nothing, that is, if it refers to a procedure, then I want to invoke that handler. The invoke method comes for free Every delegate provides the invoke keyword. We'll see why in a bit. And in addition, although this is slightly more confusing, you don't even have to call the invoke keyword because handler is a procedure. You can just call the procedure. Just say handler and pass in the parameter. Either one of these works. I use invoke because it's clearer what's going on. Just like you can call any procedure by specifying its name and a parameter you pass to it, here, the name of the procedure is handler, and here's the parameter we're passing to it. Of course, handler is an indirection. It is a variable that refers to a procedure that matches this type of procedure. Right now, I have no idea what that procedure is. It's just that I know that it has to be a file handler delegate type, which means I know that it's a procedure that accepts a file info object. So I know down here, I can pass it a file info, and it'll do something with it. I don't know what, but something. All right, let's go look at the example that uses file search for. That would be G. OK, we'll create an instance of file search for. I'll create an instance of my display procedures class. Remember, that's the one that has those procedures I might want to call. I can set the handler property of that file search for instance to be the address of the display file and size procedure. So that says, I'm going to give you the address of a procedure. OK, handler, now you refer to this procedure. And when I call your invoke method, or when I just say go, do your thing, it's going to call that procedure. OK, let's try this. We set the handler, we execute. And if we look in our output window, we displayed the file and the size, because that's what we said to do in this procedure. Let's set the handler to be a different procedure. Let's set it to be display file name. And now let's execute again. This time in the output window, we see just file name followed by the file name, because that's what the display file name procedure, where is it? Right there, said to do. This is a tricky concept. We have just said, set the handler to be the address of some procedure, and then when you find a file, execute that procedure. Call it. And we don't know what the procedure is until we actually run the code. This is like an interface, the same thing we saw before, except now we're using individual procedures, not classes that implement an interface. Now that delegate that we call can be an instance delegate or a shared delegate. Either one works. Pretty amazingly, they keep track of things, so either one works. Let's look at an example here. In this case, I create FS4 as file search 4 again, but this time I'm using a shared instance, display procedures.debug file and size. This is actually easier, because there's just one copy of that procedure in memory. In the previous example, we had to create an instance of the display procedures class and use methods of that instance in our handler property. Here, we're using the public one that's available only once in memory. It's a shared procedure. We're setting the handler to be that procedure and execute. And this writes output only to the output window. We come back here, look in the output window, which I should be able to see here. And there's our output that we just got. That just got written to the output window by this code. Again, we pass the address of a different procedure, but it was still of the same delegate type. Now, I have to show you this. If you try to pass the procedure of a, that doesn't match the delegate type, this code can't compile. Let's try it. I'll come along here and add my own procedure. Private sub handle file and pass in a string and do something with the string, console x, and then come down here and try to pass the address of that procedure instead.
what happens? Code can't compile. They tell us that handle file does not have the same signature as the delegate blah, 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 so this code can't compile. There's another issue here, too. We don't have to do this the way we've done it. That is, we don't have to assign the address of directly into that property. This is how we did the array.findAll. We just use the address of the procedure as if it was a delegate. You can also do this, dim x as new file handler delegate. There we go. And in the constructor, pass the address of display file address of, it is disp dot display file and size. There we go. And here, set the handler equal to x. You can do it either way. Either create your own instance of the file handler delegate, passing the address of the procedure to its constructor, or just allow the runtime to do that for you and pass the address directly any place you would use that procedure. If you have a C or C++ background, delegates probably seem a lot like type safe function pointers, which really is what they are. In C or C++, you could pass a memory address to a procedure as a parameter and execute the code at that memory address. It was very commonly done. But what if the parameters didn't match what you expected? Or the return value was of a different type? In that case, you were pretty much guaranteed to crash. This can't happen with delegates, because the code simply won't compile if things don't match. It's interesting to look at ILDASM, the disassembler, to see what happens when you create a delegate instance. Let's look and see if we can determine what's going on inside the code. To load ILDASM, I need to bring up the command prompt again, and I can get there by choosing the Microsoft.NET SDK command prompt. Here we are. Let me go to the folder where my demos are. And let's change to delegates and events. I'm pressing tab to cycle through these things. There we go. And we'll go from here to the folder, bin, debug. And we should have, there it is, and we can load ILDASM. Delegates and events.exe looks good to me. Here's ILDASM running, and if we expand our application, we find the file handler delegate. What seems odd to me is that I declared it as a delegate. I remember clearly going public delegate sub blah blah. I didn't create a class, yet it shows up here as a class. What's going on? Well, surprise, there is magic. The compiler takes your delegate declaration and creates a class that defines the behavior. A delegate is a class. It is a class that inherits from system.multicastDelegate. That's a type in the .NET framework. It provides invoke, begin invoke, and end invoke methods. You already called the invoke method. That's what you do to invoke the procedure, make it go. There's also begin invoke and end invoke, and these provide for asynchronous execution of your delegate instance. Those are beyond the scope of this course, but it's pretty easy to find documentation on how to invoke a delegate asynchronously. In any case, when you define a delegate in your code, the VB compiler turns it into a class, which has methods that you can call, and that's how we were able to call the invoke method of that delegate instance. It's important to understand that the delegate keyword and the .NET system.delegate class aren't really the same thing. The delegate keyword creates a special multicast delegate. This inherits from the delegate class, but can refer to multiple procedures. This gives them more flexibility. The invoke method runs all the procedures associated with this delegate in the order they're added to the list of procedures. All instances of a delegate, in general, should return no value back. Otherwise, which value would be returned when the invoke method calls each of these procedures in turn? The last one? The first one? Who knows? In any case, use the system.delegate.combine method if you want to create a multicast delegate from multiple delegates. 
the invoke method of a multicast delegate calls all the procedures in turn in the order you add them to the list. Combine allows you to control the order and the caller has no idea that multiple procedures will be executed. It simply calls the invoke method. If you've done much work with Visual Studio and events already, this is starting to feel like the concept of events in .NET and really it is the exact same thing. Let's look at an example that demonstrates the behavior of using a multicast delegate. I'll select option I to investigate running a multicast delegate. We're still using our file search for class and I'll set here del1 a delegate as new file handler delegate and I'll pass to the constructor the address of the debug file and size procedure which if you remember looks like this just a procedure which writes a line to the debug window containing the full name of the file and the length of the file we'll also create a second file handler delegate instance passing to its constructor the address of the display file and size procedure which if you remember just displays into the console window the full name and the length. Okay, so now we have two delegates and at this point I could say del1.invoke and it would invoke that delegate or del2.invoke and it would invoke that delegate. I'd have to pass it a file to display of course as a parameter. I'm going to now create del3 as file handler delegate and assign into it the results of calling the system.delegate.combine method combining together del1 and del2. Now the combine method returns a system.delegate instance so I need to cast it as a file handler delegate that specific kind of delegate I'm working with. Once I do that using the ctype operator I can assign it into this delegate del3. Now it's interesting to note by the way I can't just say delegate.combine because delegate is a keyword in Visual Basic. So there are two alternatives. You can either put system.delegate every time you want to refer to that specific class or you can surround it in square brackets. I find the square bracket thing very difficult to deal with. That is the word delegate in square brackets then dot combine. It looks weird. So I use the full name system.delegate in my code whenever I want to refer to the specific system.delegate type. When I'm done with this line of code, del3 now is a delegate that contains references to two procedures. I can combine as many as I want into a single delegate. I just did two here, but we could combine three or four or more into that single delegate instance. I'll set the handler property of fs4 to be that delegate instance that contains references to two procedures. And finally, we're going to execute fs4. And if you'll remember, file search for this class when it runs its execute procedure ends up just invoking whatever delegate it finds in that handler variable. Handler in this case is a delegate that refers to two other procedures so when we invoke it even though it just says one call to invoke here we're going to run two procedures. I'll press F5 to continue full speed and we'll see in the output window here's one Here's the output from one of those procedures and in the output window here we'll see the output from the other procedure. So one procedure wrote to the console window here and one procedure wrote to the debug window or output window here. So one call to invoke ran both of those methods.